I did my shoulder in when I was doing an advert for beer in, right. s- in South Africa. South Africa. When I was doing a, an advert. And what they did Hello was... Hello to you. In the, where, do you know the film Zulu? Yeah. Well, we went to where the film the film Zulu, and yeah. we built that encampment, you know, where they heroically held out. You recreated I, Zulu for a beer advert? Yeah. Um, and I dressed as, like, Michael Caine. Did you build it yourself? Is that how you did your shoulder? No. I, please. I was just putting you in the environment. We're in the... Is it the desert in South Africa? It's not a desert. Plains? The plains. We were in the middle of nowhere in South Africa, yeah? Now, what happened was, was that there's a warden that comes with you when you go into the plains, like a South African fella. Right. And he's there to protect you from snakes. Right. To be, like, snake aware and all mm-hmm. that and everything. So I got talking to him and he says the two main dangers out here are something called the puff adder. Right. And something called the black mamba. Right. Yeah, why are you laughing? <laughs> I'm laughing at puff and I'm laughing at black <laughs> mamba. <laughs> puff mamba. He could be a footballer, couldn't he? <clears throat> um, and so anyway, I got talking to him and he took me... I said, the puff adder is really short and really fat, yeah? Right. It's probably only two feet long, but really For thick. For listeners, Bob's holding his hands about two feet two apart feet right away, now. No, really thick. But the beauty of the puff adder is, is it ain't going to go for you, but if you stand on it or stand near it, you're a goner. So what does this fella do then? So he keeps his eye, he knows that he can... <laughs> What do you mean, the king now? Well, has he got a harpoon or something with him? It, I'll come to that. All right, OK, sorry. He's the warden, yeah? Yeah. To his snake man. So I said I would really like to see a puff adder, <clears throat> yeah? Because you can go and look <laughs> I'm at... I'm a puff again. Yeah, I'd really like to see a puff adder. So he says, well, hop in. He says there'll, there'll be loads of them up there. He said, "Up in." We drove up in. It wasn't. It, funnily enough, it wasn't a Land Rover. But it, Can I just say that I much prefer if someone. I know you're not supposed to call people a puff anymore. Yeah. But if you do, it's got to be P U F F and not this P O O F thing. Poof. Well, I. It's got I, to be puff, hasn't it? I think. I mean, from my. Bob youth, Mortimer is a puff. I'm happy with that. Yeah. I mean, P U F F. When um, when I was young. Yeah. Didn't was there nothing to do with his sexuality? Was it not? It was not. An, I don't think it was a nice thing to call someone, oh, but it meant you were cowardly, right? You know what I mean? It's all tied in, though. I think. Maybe. Anyway, carry on. So I go up in it, and like, I have misled <clears throat> the listeners because it wasn't a Land Rover. It was some kind of Land. I don't know. Fake what. news. <laughs> what this whole thing? Just the Land Rover bit. Yeah, I did. I fake newsed you up, right up, and um, so anyway, we went. Went off and fucking hell, I saw a giraffe by the way, Andy. In I've the, seen in one, I've seen a giraffe. No, but in its own habitat, yeah, doing its chewing thing side to side, you know yeah, what I mean? I've seen one of them. Uh, in what in its natural habitat, South Lakes, um, wildlife park, yeah, near, fucking near plastic Kendall. one. The um, so we get out, um, there's a puff adder, he says, just be slow or whatever. <laughs> and you're gonna be laughing at me, so you're not giving me story any I'm just credence. laughing at puff, I gotta stop. <laughs> Right, we'll get rid of the puff adder. <laughs> but I said, I didn't see a puff adder. We were approaching oh, where sorry. the warden felt instinctively there would be a puff adder. Right, OK. What happens? Suddenly, he says, get back in a fucking vehicle! Right? I can't... Was that any good? Get back in a fucking vehicle! Right? <laughs> So what the fuck is happening? So I, I didn't instantly go. There's a fucking black mamba coming out. No, Black Mamba, I've told you before about the Mamba. I'm a bit upset because the most scary thing that happened in my life. <laughs> a Black Mamba's run. They do, yeah. They've got, like... A, a circle thing, haven't they? They bounce. No, they they go... Two-thirds of the body raises up erect, yeah? And one... <laughs> one, one th- what, are you laughing at erect? <laughs> erect. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and the final third, they coil, and the runner can go up to 20 km, kil- kilometres an hour. Yeah. So I'm fucking hell. So I ran to the... Um, to the vehicle, and just as I slammed the door, yeah, yeah. the mamba hit the glass of my window, and it, I mean, it didn't bite it, it didn't penetrate it, and all its venom come out, and I'm, I swear <laughs> I mean, why are you laughing at venom? I'm laughing at venom coming out. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. And then, and all this, it must be about half a pint of it, this honey sort of coloured stuff, and then it disappeared. I didn't know where it was. I looked out <laughs> the front window, right? And sorry, he got out. The fa- he got in the car. He got in the back of the car, and he w- he went out with a gun, 
I, I had no idea whether it's a gun or a, a, a tranquilizer gun or whatever, but with a gun, gets out to the front of the car, and then he point he points the gun at me <laughs> right through the window. <laughs> We <laughs> thought you were a puff adder. No. Or a puff. He says, mate, no, I've got to, uh, what's the African? Mate, I'm fucking insane. I'm a fucking rapist. <laughs> right? <laughs> so, ah, uh, fuck. So I, I, I reversed the car. I won't go into the details of that, yeah. but I had to keep down in the footwell. Right. Yeah? And from just you... steer best I could to get away from this insane. Who'd hired this for? <laughs> I don't know. So I, I got away from it, I drove away, but when I... I, I do you think he was working in cahoots with the snake? Well, you do wonder. You do wonder. Was, I the snake was like a, a, the bait. And anyway, so that's when I damaged... When I was just reversing blind, and yeah. I went smack into a boulder or something. Right. And um, I don't know, just because of the way my hand was reaching up to the <clears> steering wheel, I just uh, snapped some, right. some of the muscles, the tendons or something. Right. So, so if we could, like, sort of de-fake news that story one yeah. by one, basically you were down the precinct and you reversed it with Bollard because <laughs> you were smoking. No. While honestly, you were driving. Honestly, it's not fake news. Can you can you just say once once more, can you, what was it, get back in the fucking vehicle? He said, I, I'm just, just in my memory of it. He says, get back in the vehicle. No. I did you say fucking vehicle? Get back in the vehicle. Get back in the fucking vehicle! That's it. That's a free ringtone for everyone there. <laughs> you can use that as a ringtone. Anyway, so I had a day off, so I drove down... Do you know South Africa? I was, I was in Cape Town, but if you go down to the bottom, you can go to the southernmost point of South, of South Africa. I think it's called Cape... Is it Cape of Good Hope? Cape Cod? Cape Cod, uh, Cape whatever. Cape Crusader? Um, and it's... As you go down, it's all like a shithole, isn't that, you know? Yeah. There's like... Um, there's all these build. Um, it's the legacy, isn't it, of apartheid? <laughs> <laughs> but it's a legacy, isn't it? And not all legacies are good. Anyway, so you go, and then you suddenly it, like it goes back to like um, like Dutch British influence, and right. like it's beautiful beaches, seaside, and all that, all the way down. Bit racist. <laughs> Bit what racist? Mm. Why? I just felt racist. <laughs> The way you said it you goes back to the Dutch English influence and everything's nice again. Well, I'm uh, just saying, you might want us to cut that out later on. <laughs> and so there's a little place, and I can't remember whether it's called um, Penguin Beach or uh, something that makes me say it's called. Let's just say it's Penguin Bay Beach for the, sake of, or for the sake of advancing the story. <laughs> So I think I'll stop there. That, I'll get me a little meaty self down there and have a look at... So I've never seen a penguin. I'd love to see a penguin. Wouldn't you? Edinburgh Zoo. If I said there's a penguin out there do you yeah. in a box... Do you have you not come? been to Edinburgh Zoo? The Penguin oh, Parade? A penguin in its natural environment. Tell me about the penguin parade. <laughs> what happens? Every afternoon, one o'clock, the penguins come out the penguin enclosure and the, the uh, visitors line the sides of the path. Yeah. And the penguins go on a little parade in this little circular thing. Yeah. And um, one of them is the King of Norway. One of the pe- one of the penguins is yeah. the King of Norway. Yeah. Well, he actually holds that title. He does. Yeah, that's true. Hmm? It's not fake news. It's true. So anyway, I go down. There's a parking, and I park my car right. And there's a little kiosk there for parking, and there's some bloke with there. So I pay up, and I go down, and it's it's this beautiful little cove. Turn a corner amongst the rocks, and sure enough, there's a penguin. The f- the fucking there's a penguin. Are you saying penguin? Penguin. Penguin. Right. They call them pufty. <laughs> they do, they call them pufty. <laughs> pufty. And um, <laughs> so I was taking a photo of it, and then I hear this voice, South African, say, Get away from that fucking pufty! <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> Get away from that fucking pufty! <laughs> And it's the bloke from the key. You know the bloke. I thought it pe- might be. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but honestly, it is. And he took. He uh, grabbed me and he took me up to the kiosk and he says, "I'm sorry about the accent. I'm going to have to find you, mate, for distressing the birds." Right. So I'm in there with him and he's fiddling about with like a shitty little invoice book or something like that. And then I. <laughs> I'm like, what is the matter? I look out of the kiosk. And there's a South African copper there, yeah, with his fuck revolver. Yeah. I promise you, right? And he says, get out of the fucking kiosk. He's a fucking gangbanger. <laughs> right? 
So he wrestles, he wrestles the bloke to the floor and take frog marches him to his car. Then he comes up to to me, says, uh, "No, I've got to not be Australian here, Lucky." Lucky escape. No, that's Australian, isn't it? Be Australian if you want. It's fine. Seth Ifrickie, lucky escape there, mate. This is his MOD. He hangs around blokes looking at the penguins and then he full on rapes them. You lucky coffer. So I've only given you the bread and butter of it there. But life in South Africa is a bit like that. South Africa. Quite a lot happened when I was over there, and there's a little story yeah. I'd like to tell you. I was there for 10 days, as you know. Yeah. So let's face it, I'm not going to be able to pull off more than 10 stories there. <laughs> eh? But on, a, on one of the days, there's a really famous restaurant in Cape Town. People who've been there will know it. It's like a VIP place. It's on the beach near the harbour. Yeah. And you eat on the beach, and they yeah. cook the food, then bring it out to you on the beach and that. You get a lot of... Um... Are you sponsored by the beach or something? <laughs> you seen it. <laughs> You get a lot of like the Johannesburg rappers there, yeah, <laughs> yeah. and a lot of this the, the, the Joe Berg beat boys. No, but it's big news, you know, big big Is news. It? The South African rap scene. Yeah. Some fella rapped at my son on an underground train in Barcelona once. What did he say to I'm, him? I'm going to save that for another podcast. Okay, so it's very exclusive. The rapping podcast I'm going to do. It's really exclusive restaurant. Yeah. I want to em- emphasize that. Right, yeah. it's a bit like a say for you, a bit like a Phoenix restaurant <laughs> right. you know, in yeah. Sunderland. It's that posh, right? So they have a gate there. You got to, you have you 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 can't just turn up. I right. got in there because the production company got me in there. Um, they got bouncers on gates before you even drive to the restaurant. Really, imp- I just want to say it's important. You know, oh. um, got flame lights on the beach and that. Um, we'd phoned ahead. <laughs> Do you know Randall and Hopkirk? You know, I did a show called Randall and Hopkirk on the telly. You're surprised you bring that up, yeah? Well, no, it's, it's really... Good, was it? Yeah, nobody's really big in South, South Africa. Hence. Well, do you have to go to, like, um, like conferences and stuff? No, I wouldn't do that, that sort of shit, but I'm saying that's what got me in there. <laughs> I'm sat on the table on the beach and I see a bloke in a daft outfit and that, so I want to order some food. So I beckon him over and I say, I want boiled lobster, right? And I said, Did you say please? Well, I probably did. I'm just saying, you know, like, all right, I want boiled lobster, please. But I said, if it isn't fresh, I'll set fire to myself, (laughs) right? And the restaurant will look stupid. But that was was called a joke. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm. So he says, well, look, mate, you can choose your own lobster from the lobster pots by the rocks if you don't mind getting a little bit wet. Well, Andy, I had, as you know I would, my chino shorts on. Yeah. Um, and he said the water will only come up to your knees. So I thought, I'm going to go for it. But you pick me on lobster from the sea. We, we climbed over these rocks and we get to what is... It's actually an artificial pool, but it looks like it's part of the, the rocky environment. Right. He shines his torch into the pool. And in there you can see tens, if not hundreds, of lobsters, Andy. Really? Under the torch light. It's a nice thing to... I love doing this. That's a, that's a nice thing to have seen, isn't it, Andy? <laughs> yes. Isn't it, though? It's every coming your catchphrase. <laughs> <laughs> so he, he shines um, his torch on the lobsters. Mm-hmm. Then he turns around really quickly, cracks me around the head with his torch. Yeah? Right. He says, get in the fucking lobster pit, you prick. <laughs> that's Australian, isn't it? No, that was all right. Get in the fucking lobster pot, you prick. <laughs> Something like that. I said, what the fuck are you doing? He says, shut your fucking face, fat boy. <laughs> right? I'm Coolie Charner, the rapper. Don't treat me like a kaffer. <laughs> I said, shit, I didn't know. I thought you were the, the waiter because you had this, like, gown on. Right. And I'll stop the accent. He says, do waiters wear... Ga- well, do wait... I can't do it. Do waiters wear have, gowns. Have a go. <laughs> do waiters wear gowns worth over 20,000 rand, joke boy. I have a Timex gold-plated watch. Get in the fucking lab's lobster pot! <laughs> and then he strikes me again with the torch, right? Now, I managed to uh, deflect this blow a bit with my arm, Andy, which I was pretty pleased about. Yeah. Because I deflected it. I said, look, I'm really sorry. I thought he was going to kill me. I said, I'm really sorry. I thought you were, you, you were the waiter. You don't have to kill me. Then I hear another voice, quite a calm voice, in the darkness, right? Put the torch down, Cooley, and back <laughs> off the fat guy. That's Australian, wasn't it? I can't tell anymore. Cooley shines his torch up to the top of the rocks, and there is two feet. He's the not- a really notorious Cape Town rapper. Right. And he's got a gun. I right. promise you've got it. It's the first time I've ever seen a gun. Really. Was it a shiny gun? 
Well, I, I, I was, he had a, you know, he might not have had a gun, but as far as he's in a black, <laughs> I thought it was it's a gun. Jesus, thanks, mate. I said, I think he was going to kill me. He said, just pick up a lobster. No. Nope. <laughs> American. <laughs> <laughs> just pick up a lobster and get back to your table. <laughs> no, that's all. See, I'll deal with Cooley. So I climbed up the rocks to make me escape, and as I passed two feet, I said, no, it's really kind of you, but why, why did you help me? And he said, it's a pleasure, Mr Hopkirk. Give more respects to Mr Randall. I said, I will do. And he says, and by the way, he wasn't going to kill you. He was going to stick a lobster up your anus. 